Today, we're going to unravel a subject that unfortunately is quite prevalent in the daily lives of many. Manipulation. When people or groups use subtle tricks to get power and advantage over others, that's a form of negative social influence. There are many places in life where manipulation can happen, such as the workplace, personal relationships, and even big social groups. Understanding and thinking about these strategies is not only a way to protect your own privacy, but it can also help make relationships better and more open. It is important to learn how to protect yourself, so we will look at the strongest ways to trick people. Know that all information is neutral. It's up to the person who uses it to give it a purpose. Remember that these are dark strategies, and the point of this material is to teach you how to avoid them, not how to use them against other people. Like a tool, this information can be used to make something beautiful or do something bad. So everything you learn in this video should be used in a smart way, whether it's for self-defense or personal growth. We'll learn how manipulation creeps into our lives in a way that we don't even notice. We'll take the mystery out of these techniques so that we can not only spot them, but also get the tools we need to fight them. In the end, I promise you that you will be better prepared to look at the world with a more critical eye and a more open mind. Number one, triangulation. Triangulation is a subtle but effective way to control someone by adding a third person to a relationship to cause conflict, stress, or confusion. These third parties are used by the manipulator to keep control upset the relationship, or draw attention away from their own questionable actions. In triangulation, the trickster may use a third person to support their own thoughts and feelings, which hurts the other person's reputation. They may also share false or private information between the two people. This can make the victims doubt their own thoughts and feelings, which can make them feel alone and make them depend on the manipulator more. In a family setting, for example, a parent might say bad things about one child to another, making friends with the second child and leaving the first child alone and feeling unsafe. At work, a boss might tell another worker something bad about another worker, which could make them dislike and be suspicious of each other. Triangulation is especially harmful because it breaks down trust and direct contact between the people involved. This lets the manipulator stay in charge and not take responsibility for problems or misunderstandings. People who are manipulated in this way often get stuck in a cycle of misunderstandings and fights without fully knowing where these problems came from or what the manipulator's role is in them. To stop triangulation, both people being manipulated need to be aware of it, be able to talk to each other honestly and have strong personal limits. It is important to question the accuracy of the information you receive, get more information from the other people involved, and stay away from talks or actions that cause conflict or mistrust. Number two, double bind. A double bind is a form of psychological manipulation in which a person is given two choices or messages that are at odds with each other. No matter which choice they make, they will be wrong or at a loss. Often this method is used to trick and control the target, making them feel helpless, confused and anxious because there is no good or right way out. In these cases, the trickster may say things that are different from what is expected or demanded. For instance, a parent might scold a kid for not being honest and open, but if the kid tries to talk about how they feel, they are told they are being rude or too sensitive. The child is in a tough spot because if they speak up, they will be punished and if they don't, they will also be picked on. People in relationships can also be stuck in the double bind. One person may say they want more freedom, but when their partner spends time alone, they act angry or detached. The person being manipulated is left feeling confused and unsafe because everything they do seems to make things worse. 
This kind of influence is especially sneaky because it targets the person's trust in their own thoughts and actions. The person may start to question themselves all the time and have low self-esteem, which makes them more reliant on the manipulator. In order to get out of a double bind, one must first realize that it is a manipulation trick and not a sign of their own failure or incompetence. The person can feel better about their thoughts and feelings by getting help from trusted friends, counselors or therapists. Setting clear limits and talking to people in an assertive way are also very important ways to protect yourself from this kind of manipulation. Number three, projection. Projecting is a form of manipulation in which the manipulator blames the victim for their own flaws, feelings, or bad motives. This happens when the manipulator can't or won't admit their own flaws or bad habits. Instead, they put those problems on the other person, making them feel bad about their own actions or feelings. This defense strategy changes the victim's view of reality, making them doubt their own thoughts and blame themselves for problems or feelings that belong to the manipulator. For instance, a jealous partner might say that the other person is cheating on them or flirting, when, in fact, it is the jealous partner who is thinking or acting in these ways. The manipulator can shift the focus from their own flaws to the victim's problems by projecting blame onto them. This makes the victim feel protective, confused, or guilty for no reason. This can make the target feel bad about their own self-worth and make them more emotionally dependent on the manipulator. When someone is dealing with projection, they need to keep a strong sense of their own truth and boundaries. The person should be able to tell when this method is being used against them and not take the false charges personally. People who are being manipulated by projection can protect themselves by writing down their own thoughts and feelings, asking for feedback from reliable third parties and practicing self-affirmation. It is also important for the victim to learn how to mentally separate themselves from the manipulator and set clear limits. They should refuse to take responsibility for problems or feelings that are not their own. To deal with the effects of this type of abuse, it may be necessary to cut ties or get help from a professional. Number four, time pressure. Time pressure is a trick used to get someone to make a choice quickly by making them feel like they need to. The manipulator says that something needs to be done right away to avoid bad things happening or that a one-time chance is about to end. This method uses anxiety and fear of loss against the victim by cutting down on their time to think, study or get other opinions. This method is often used in high-pressure sales where the seller says a deal is only good for a short time or that there are only a few items left. But it can also happen in personal and professional relationships, like when someone expects an important answer right away to a request or sets an impossible due date for a decision that is very important. People who are being manipulated may make hasty choices, which are usually bad for them and good for the person who is manipulating them. The victim can't think about all of their choices because of the false sense of urgency. Talking to outsiders or just trusting their own gut can help them fight in this way. It is important to know when someone is trying to change the time to get you to change your mind. Don't give in to the pressure to act right away. Instead, ask for time to think. Also, keep in mind that not all decisions need an immediate answer. Also, people should know that being rushed for time is a sign of manipulation and that waiting can often lead to new information that will help them make a better, more balanced choice. Number five, unpredictability and lack of consistency. The manipulator acts erratically and unpredictably, making the victim feel confused and unsafe. This is called inconsistency and unreliability. This kind of behavior can go from being loved and caring one minute to being cold or uncaring the next for no clear reason. This pattern of behavior 
makes the target feel lost and anxious all the time because they can't figure out what the manipulator is doing. In abusive relationships, this strategy is often used by the abuser to keep the other person mentally unstable by switching between being kind and mean. If the victim is trying to figure out why the manipulator acts the way they do and wants love or praise, they may get stuck in a cycle of trying to please the manipulator and never feel stable or happy. People like unpredictability because it plays on their need for stability and regularity. When someone doesn't act in a logical or predictable way, it's hard for others to adapt or react in the right way. This can make others emotionally and psychologically dependent on the manipulator, who seems to be the only person who can help or make them feel better. To deal with the manipulator's inconsistent and unpredictable behavior, the victim should know what that behavior looks like and know that it's not their job to constantly fix or change things to make the other person happy. Setting clear limits and keeping your mental distance from the manipulator is very important. Also, getting help from friends, family or professionals can give you the viewpoint and support. You need to deal with this kind of manipulation and get your independence and self-esteem back on track. Number six, emotional blackmail. Using someone's feelings against them to get what you want is what emotional blackmail is. Usually, this is done by making the target feel obligated, scared, guilty, or ashamed, which makes them do something against their own will or values to please the manipulator. Emotional blackmail is when someone takes advantage of the emotional connection between two people. Either directly or indirectly, the manipulator may say that their own happiness, well-being, or love relies on what the victim does. This makes the victim feel responsible for the manipulator's feelings. Emotional blackmail includes sayings like, if you really loved me, you would do this, or I can't believe you would let me do this alone. These phrases not only make the other person feel guilty for not meeting standards, but they also give them a false sense of duty. To deal with emotional blackmail, you need to be aware of it when it happens, set and stick to clear limits and talk to people in a strong way. This means letting your own wants and feelings be known without letting fear, guilt, or duty control what you do. To deal with the stress and keep your independence, it can also help to boost your self-esteem and get help from others, like friends, family, or pros. Number seven, gaslighting. When someone is gaslighting someone, they may strongly deny that certain things happened or change facts to make the victim's memory wrong. They might also put down the victim's feelings by calling their responses crazy or irrational, or they might use inside information to hurt their reputation. And this makes the target constantly judge themselves and look for approval from other people. Gaslighting can happen in personal relationships, at work, or in bigger issues like politics or the news. Gaslighting has very bad effects, like making people anxious, depressed, and less likely to trust their own memories and views. To stop gaslighting, you need to have more faith in yourself and your own judgment. This could mean writing down events or talks, getting outside opinions to make sure what you're seeing is real, and setting clear limits with the manipulator. In the worst situations, it might be necessary to leave the toxic setting. It's also important to recognize and name the experience because it gives the target power and reduces the manipulator's control. Number eight, false social approval. False social acceptance is a form of manipulation in which someone fakes or overstates how much support, agreement or approval they have from other people in order to get what they want. To trick someone into thinking that a certain idea, behavior or product is more popular or okay than it really is, the manipulator might make up stories, twist facts, or give the impression that everyone agrees on it. This strategy takes advantage of the way people naturally want to fit in and get support from others. 
To protect yourself from fake social approval, it's important to learn how to think critically and question claims of acceptance or fame. Before believing that everyone agrees on something, it's important to look for solid proof and trust your own thoughts and feelings, even if that means going against what the majority thinks. People can make more honest decisions and be less affected by the push to fit in with made-up or exaggerated social norms when they're aware of and understand this type of manipulation. Number 9. Concealment of Information One person withholds important or relevant information from another person on purpose in order to change their choices or perceptions. This is called concealment of information. People who are manipulated in this way may change a lot about how they think and act because they are made to make choices based on a skewed or incomplete view of reality. This kind of trickery can happen in many situations, from personal relationships to business deals to politics. If you want to protect yourself from people hiding information, you should be aware of this option and question and investigate. Check facts from more than one source, ask lots of questions, and try to be open and honest in all dealings and encounters. Also, learning to think critically and not take things at face value can help you figure out when important information is being hidden. When people realize that hiding information is a form of manipulation, they are more careful and less likely to let choices or opinions based on incomplete or skewed information affect them. To make relationships more open and fair, People need to understand how important it is to talk to each other in an honest and open way. Number 10. Fear Attachment Fear attachment manipulators often set up a do-or-die situation to make their victims think that bad things will happen if they don't do what they're told. This can be anything from direct threats to hints or the making up of bad possible situations. That person is being manipulated to feel like they have to follow or agree with them in order to avoid what they fear will happen. In personal relationships, the workplace, marketing and even politics, this method is used all the time. To protect yourself from fear attachment, you need to know how to spot when fear is being used to control you. This could mean questioning the threats that are being made, looking at one's choices objectively, and asking for help or other points of view. It's also important to stay calm and not act on impulse when you're scared. Building up your self-esteem and support networks can also help you be less vulnerable to manipulation based on fear. When someone knows their own rights and limits, they can stand up to people who try to use their fear to manipulate them. Also, learning how to deal with stress and be resilient can help you deal with fear in a healthy and confident way, making it harder for the trickster to control your feelings and choices. Number 11. The Blame Game A common way for manipulators to get their victims to take responsibility for their own mistakes, failures or actions is by playing the blame game. The goal of this strategy is to make the victim feel bad about themselves even if they haven't done anything wrong. This will make them question themselves, say sorry too much, and even take on responsibilities that aren't theirs. The blame game is a way for manipulators to keep people from noticing the bad things they're doing and to avoid taking responsibility for their actions. The manipulator stays in power and control by making the victim feel guilty for bad things that happen or problems that happen. This lowers the victim's self-esteem and makes them less assertive. This method can be seen in many places, like violent relationships, the workplace, and families that don't work well together. For instance, in a relationship, one person who is cunning might say that the other person's jealous or irrational behavior is their fault, and that it is their behavior that makes them act this way. At work, a co-worker or boss might blame the victim for the failure of a project when in reality, the trickster or someone else shared the blame. To avoid playing the blame game, it's important to keep your cool 
and refuse to take responsibility for things that are clearly not your fault or that belong to someone else. Improving your self-esteem and knowledge of your own shortcomings can help you spot and refuse unfair accusations of blame. Writing down what happened and what was said can help you fight false charges and keep an objective view. Furthermore, it is important to set clear limits with the manipulator and make it clear that trying to shift blame is not acceptable. Getting help from friends, family or professionals can also give the victim approval and a different point of view, which can help them break free from the cycle of guilt that the manipulator has put them in. Before we move on to number 12 on our list, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot and costs you nothing. Never miss out on any of our videos about stoicism and the way you can master your life. Number 12. False praise. False praise is a form of manipulation in which someone says nice things about someone else without really meaning it in order to control and affect them. This method is used to get the victim to believe you, let down their guard, or feel like you owe them something. People often use false praise to get someone to agree to something they don't want or to keep them from seeing what they really want. Compliments are a skillful way for manipulators to make people feel good and give them a fake sense of security. People are easier to persuade when they feel appreciated or praised. They are more likely to want to return the favor or keep the good mood going. You can say nice things about the victim's looks, knowledge, skills, or any other trait at all. But the meaning behind false praise is different from the meaning behind real comments. Sincere compliments are given out of respect or appreciation for someone without expecting anything in return. False compliments, on the other hand, are meant to trick or get something from the person being praised. The person who is manipulating you may not believe what they are saying, but they know that good words can have a big effect on how someone acts. To protect yourself from getting fake praises, it's important to learn how to tell if someone is being honest. Checking the person's behavior pattern, the situation in which the compliments are given, and how well the words and actions match up can help you tell if the praises are real or not. A person can also accept compliments without being too affected by them if they have good self-esteem and don't depend on outside approval. Number 13. Victimization. When someone is trying to trick someone, they use victimization, which means they act like they are a victim of bad luck, other people, or events they can't change. People use this method to get people to feel sorry for them, avoid taking responsibility for their actions, and change other people's behavior to benefit themselves. By making themselves look like victims, manipulators try to get people to feel sorry for them and change what they expect from and how they act around the manipulator. This way of manipulating people can work especially well because it plays on our natural desire to help and protect those who are hurting or have less than they should. But victimization isn't a real sign of grief. It's done on purpose to reach certain goals like drawing attention away from bad behavior, controlling the people around you, or getting resources and benefits. Victimization can also be used to switch roles between the bad guy and the good guy, especially after the manipulator has done something wrong or hurt someone. The trickster tries to avoid being punished for their actions by pretending to be the real victim. They may even succeed in making the real victim feel bad about what they did, and say sorry. It is important to keep a balance between empathy and logic to avoid being manipulated by someone who is being a victim. It's important to know when someone is really having a hard time, but it's also important to look at the situation critically, especially if patterns of abuse start to show. It's helpful to set clear limits and keep an open mind about everyone's duties and actions. Number 14. Intentional silence. Intentional silence tactics are when someone chooses to be quiet or not talk to someone as a way to control, punish 
or gain power over them. This kind of manipulation is also called the silent treatment, and it can be very bad because it makes the victim feel like their feelings aren't real and makes them feel alone, uncertain and anxious. In this strategy, the manipulator doesn't answer messages, calls or direct efforts at dialogue when they are asked to. This can make the person feel rejected, unsafe and desperate for answers or a way out. For the manipulator, the goal is to make the victim question their own actions, feelings and worth. This makes the victim blame themselves for keeping quiet and often admit fault or say sorry even when they are not to blame. Because it plays on our need to communicate and be understood, silence can be a very strong weapon. People who don't get feedback or talk to others may feel unimportant and unnoticed, which can have a big effect on their self-esteem and mental health. The person who is being silenced needs to understand that this is a way to control their feelings and not a sign of how valuable or guilty they are. Important steps include staying true to yourself, asking for help, and being honest about how you feel without needing attention. To protect one's mental health, it's also important to set clear limits and, if necessary, rethink the value and viability of the relationship with the manipulator. One of the most important lessons you can learn from Stoicism is to always do what is right. To do this, we must treat everyone equally and fairly, and we must also make sure that no one takes advantage of our kindness or concern. Lastly, Stoicism teaches us to seek wisdom and truth. This means that we should try to fully understand events and people's intentions instead of making snap decisions based on our feelings.